Hi everyone and welcome back to the lab. In this video I'll be going over the purification of some sulfur here. I've got technical grade sulfur and it's 99.9% .9 sulfur according to the manufacturer but uh, I can't really be too sure because I just bought it on eBay and it came in a vacuum pack. So before I use sulfur for some uh, applications that require higher, higher purity I typically recrystallize it. And sulfur is difficult to recrystallize because it's not very soluble in a whole lot of solvents. Uh, the most commonly used solvent is toluene which uh, is sometimes hard to come by, and I'm not going to use my precious toluene here to uh, recrystallize a bunch of sulfur. Um, you can also use benzene, but benzene suffers from the same issue of being both expensive, carcinogenic, and uh, not that easy to come by. Uh, but at the hardware store, you can get one solvent that works pretty well for sulfur, and that is xylenes. Now notice I didn't say xylene, it's xylenes, because this is actually uh, three isomers of xylene, xylene being dimethylbenzene. Uh, this probably also has an, uh, an ethylbenzene um, impurity in it as well, because it's, they're difficult to se separate by distillation, and this is separated from uh, BTX, basically, in the petroleum industry by distillation, so I expect there to be a small impurity of that in there too, uh, but that doesn't really matter for the purposes that I'm using it for today. So you can find this at the hardware store, and I've got half a liter of it here in the speaker. You're going to want to do this with lots of ventilation because, of course, this stinks up the place. It's got about the same vapor pressure as water, which isn't too terrible, um, but that makes it difficult to evaporate later. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and also, its solubility, or sulfur solubility in xylene, mixed xylenes, I should say, is uh, small but doable. So I've got here 50 grams of powdered sulfur, and in general, the rule is... Uh, for every 10 milliliters of mixed xylenes, you can uh, dissolve about one gram of sulfur when this is near boiling. So the plan is to simply add uh, 50 milliliters, or sorry, 50 grams of sulfur, impure sulfur, to the xylenes, heat and stir until um, all of the sulfur is dissolved, and then we can filter the solution to remove some of the crap in here that's not soluble in the xylene, xylenes, and uh, then we can allow the sulfur to crystallize back out of the xylenes after putting that in the refrigerator. A word of safety before doing this, um, this xylene, uh, it's essentially gasoline, it's a, it behaves very much like gasoline, it's a flammable liquid, it's volatile, it smells, so you have to do this in an efficient fume hood, but not only that, you need to have fire protection me methods in place, because this is essentially a cup of what will soon be boiling gasoline. Um, if this were to catch on fire, there would be a lab disaster beyond belief in this room. So uh, make sure you have a good CO2 fire extinguisher available, not water, um, or any, any sort of fire suppression system. If the dry chemical works well, a bucket of sand can't hurt. Be very, very careful because uh, half a liter of boiling xylene is no joke. You also need to do this in an efficient fume hood because, of course, when it's near the boiling point, it becomes quite volatile, and it's not good to be breathing in all the time. So since this is just now starting to heat up, I will uh, flick on the fume hood. I'll now add the sulfur to the xylenes with the uh, rapid stirring. I've got my big stir bar in there too uh, with the hope that I don't stall the stir bar with the sulfur because it's rather dense. I'll continue to heat and stir until all the sulfur is dissolved. Uh, the solution may never go fully clear though because of impurities in the sulfur that might still be uh, clouding up the xylenes. Okay, the thermometer is reading uh, right around 88C and you can see that the, uh, the sulfur has completely dissolved leaving a straw colored solution. Uh, and you can also see some bubbles coming off the bottom. Um, if I slow the stir down it might be a little more prominent. I've already turned the hot plate off, but uh, so you can see the xylenes are just beginning to boil. So uh, I don't want to take it any hotter than that, obviously, otherwise we're going to very rapidly start producing a lot of xylene vapors, and we don't want that. And notice that this is very clear, so it means that the uh, sulfur that I have is already pretty pure. There's no, uh, no real need to, uh, to filter this, actually, but if you do need to filter it, I would suggest using a large beaker like this with a coffee filter over the top. Uh, vac vacuum filtration is not needed because xylene has a uh, very low viscosity and uh, not a lot of surface tension, so it'll go right through this filter uh, without any problems at all. Pre-warm the beaker, of course, because you'll be, you'll be dumping something that's you know almost 100 C into a cold beaker, and uh, that's not good for the glass. Also, um, 
don't bother with like a Buchner funnel or something like that because the cold ceramic funnel, unless you preheat it of course, is going to drop all of the sulfur out of the xylings and uh, you'll be left with a big clogged, messy funnel. Uh, further, unless you happen to have a bath of hot xylings, you'll never get all the sulfur out of your funnel. And so uh, it's much better to go with a, uh, a disposable type version like this. Um, I'm actually not going to filter this because this looks uh, very clear actually. That's, that's really quite nice. All that's left to do now is to allow this to cool and uh, the sulfur should precipitate out and then we can go ahead and recover that. It's a bad idea, tempting as it may be, to put this in your lab fridge because uh, this is still giving off a lot of xylene vapors and most, uh, most um, non-commercial refrigerators anyway are not designed to hold solvent vapors. They're not explosion proof um, and there may be switches and other electronic stuff, fans and whatnot, inside the refrigerator that could trigger an explosion if the vapor concentration gets right. Um, so just uh, don't bother putting this in the refrigerator, let it cool down uh, at least to room temperature if you're going to put it in the fridge to try and squeeze the last bit of sulfur out of it um, and cover it with like plastic wrap and rubber band or something if you're going to put it in the fridge. Uh, but of course only after it's cool unless you know for a fact that your fridge is uh, explosion proof. Anyway, I'm just going to leave this uh, off the hot plate so it cools down a little, a little quicker in the fume hood, in the lab. Uh, I'll cover it with a big old watch glass, which I'll retrieve in a second and then uh, we can go ahead and recover the sulfur. It's been several hours and the solution is now at approximately room temperature. And you can see the sulfur has crystallized into some nice shiny crystals. And so now all that's left to do is to recover the xylenes and then uh, dry the sulfur. To recover the xylenes, uh, we just simply need to pour them off of the sulfur and the crystals of sulfur have formed sort of an interlocking lattice which keeps them in the bottom. Uh, so it's fairly easy to, to, uh, to decant like that. You can also distill the xylenes if you want to remove the rest of the sulfur and recover them completely, but since I tend to recrystallize sulfur before I use any uh, at any given time in the lab, especially since now I have a large amount of uh, technical grade sulfur, I'm simply just going to keep the solvent in a bottle so it'll be handy next time I need to recrystallize some sulfur and I don't have to bother with the distillation. So I'll pour them off right now. Okay, and then we can see the nice shiny sulfur in the bottom there, and the stir bar. Removing the xylenes from the sulfur is fairly easy. Um, the easiest way to do it is to take an ordinary coffee filter to act as a barrier for the crystals, uh, and then make an absorbent pad out of paper towels. This is uh, about four of those half sheet type paper towels uh, in the bottom of a glass pan. And you just lay the coffee filter out, and like I said before, a xylene's uh, go right through the coffee filters and paper towels and things like that. So this will absorb very rapidly and we'll end up with some nice uh, some nice dry crystals pretty soon. I almost hate to destroy that, that looks really cool. Oh, or chemistry. So here we have our almost dry crystals of pure sulfur. You can see the xylenes have soaked the paper towel uh, but they're evaporating very rapidly, and we should have, uh, within the hour, some dry, free-flowing sulfur. Well, it's been about an hour, and uh, I've continued to spread it and reconsolidate the mass, and uh, you can see now it has become a completely free-flowing crystalline yellow powder, and uh, you can tell it's dry when it doesn't stick to the paper anymore. And if I'm Good, I can get the stir bar out. Let me get these my spatula for that. But you can see it doesn't even stick to the stir bar. Just pop that out. Teflon, nothing sticks to it. And there we go. That's uh, freshly recrystallized sulfur. Well, that about wraps up the recrystallization of sulfur. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. I know I enjoyed making it. And as always, please subscribe, like, and comment.